Hi everyone, in this video I'm going to look at simplifying expressions that involve many laws of exponents. If you find the questions a little bit complicated, or you find the concepts a bit hard, I suggest you go back to one of my previous videos to recap the concepts before watching this video again. Here are the laws of exponents that I expect you know by now. Let's quickly look at some common mistakes people make. Oftentimes these mistakes come from people trying to apply the laws of exponents to adding instead of to multiplication and division. So a correct use of this law would be x to the power of 2 multiplied by x to the power of 3. I keep the same base and I add the exponents and get x to the power of 5. Be careful that you don't multiply the exponents. However, if you have x to the power of 2 plus x to the power of 2, these are like terms. And that means I'm going to add them together. 1 plus 1 is 2, and I keep exactly the same variable with exactly the same power. Or if I had x squared plus x cubed, that cannot be simplified. Similarly, if I look at dividing, a correct use of division, if I had x to the power of 3 times y out of x, I can look only at the x factors and divide them quite easily. That would give me x squared times y. If I've got adding involved or subtracting involved, let's say I've got x cubed minus y over x. I cannot just divide the x's because this means the same as x cubed over x minus y over x. So even if you did divide the x's, you'd get x squared minus y over x. In this case, what I've done has not actually simplified the question. So I would leave the fraction like it is. So let's look at law 3 and 4 together. Here's an example. If you've got 3 x cubed y all squared a common mistake people make is since they know they're multiplying the exponents they also multiply the coefficient but actually you must square their coefficient so you'll get 9 x 3 times 2 is 6 and y squared however if you've got adding involved let's say you've got x cubed plus y squared that's not the same. I'm not going to just square each part. What this means is I'm squaring the whole thing. And so if I multiply that out, I get x to the power of 3 plus 3 is 6 plus x cubed y plus x cubed y plus y squared. And then that can be simplified to x to the power of 6 plus 2x cubed y plus y squared. Let's take a look at law 5. The only thing to be careful with with law 5 is take a look at where the exponent is. So here, if the exponent is only with the x, that means 5 times 1, which is 5. Be careful not to assume that the exponent applies to the whole, the whole term. It only applies to exactly what it's next to. And for this one, whether you're adding or subtracting, If the whole thing is to the power of naught, you're going to get 1. Let's look at law 6. If you have x squared, y to the power of negative 2, that means x squared times 1 out of y squared, which gives me x squared out of y squared. And most of the time, people don't write the second step. They just know that because I've got a negative exponent, that y will be in the denominator with a positive exponent. However, you need to be careful when you are working with adding or subtracting. So if I have x squared minus y to the power of negative 2, that means the same as x squared minus 1 out of y squared. I'm not just putting y squared as the denominator of the whole thing. If I had wanted to write y squared as the denominator of everything, the second term will be 1, and to make the first term have a denominator of y squared, my numerator would be x squared y squared. Let's look at two more examples showing the different ways of treating multiplying and dividing versus adding and subtracting. So in the first example, 
you've got the same base with a 3. And since I've got the same base, I can subtract my exponents. 3 to the power of 5 minus 3 is 2. Then 2 to the power of negative 3 is the same as 2 to the power of 3 in the denominator. And finally, that can simplify to 9 out of 8. So when you simplify, if you've got everything multiplied together in the numerator and everything multiplied together in the denominator, it's very easy to go from my first step to the second step and apply the sixth law of exponents right inside the fraction that you've got already. In my second example, I've got adding. Now, adding works a little bit differently. Let's see what I've got. 3 squared is 9 plus 1 out of 2 cubed out of 27. Now, because I've got adding, I can't write the 2 cubed in the denominator of everything because they are two separate terms. So let's try and simplify a little more. 2 cubed is 8, so 9 plus an eighth out of 27. And let's write 9 and an eighth as an improper fraction. So 9 times 8 is 72 plus 173 out of 8. And I'm going to write it as divided by 27. So I'm going to have 73 out of 8 times by 1 out of 27. Now 8 times 27, let's work that out on the side. Double 27 is 54. Double 54 is 108. And double 108 is 216. So 27 times 8 is 216. So my numerator is 73 and my denominator is 216. Do you see when you've got separate bits, when you're adding or subtracting, you can't just move things around as easily as you could if you've got everything multiplied together in the top and everything multiplied together in the bottom. For the rest of this video, I'm going to go through six different questions where you need to simplify expressions. What I suggest you do is that you stop the video, try each question, and then start it again to see if you're on the right track. So let's go. It says simplify writing with positive indices. Indices is another name for exponents. So the first one. I like to simplify inside the bracket first if I can. So I'm going to get x cubed, y squared, and the y to the power of negative 3 can be written as y to the power of 3 in the numerator. And what that means is I'm left with 1 in the denominator, and I'm not going to write that and I'm going to square everything. So let's simplify inside further. x cubed, y to the power of 2 plus 3, y to the power of 5, all squared. So that's going to give me x to the power of 6, y to the power of 10. In the second question, I'm going to simplify each fraction first, and then I'll multiply them together. So I'm going to get 4x cubed, and then because I've got a fairly straightforward fraction, just with multiplying and dividing, I can move things around quite easily. And the second fraction. And now I'm going to apply the third law of exponents in the denominator. x cubed to the power of 3 is x to the power of 9. Now let's see if I can simplify. I can divide numerator and denominator by y. There's a lot going on with the x's in each fraction. So let's simplify each fraction a little further before going on. So the first fraction will be 4x to the power of 6, because I add my exponents over 1, times by 3 in the numerator. I've got x squared in the numerator and x to the power of 9 in the denominator. So that will give me x to the power of 7 in the denominator. Now I can simplify a little further, x to the power of 6 goes in there once, and x to the power of 6 goes in here x times. So I land up with 4 times 3 is 12 in the numerator, and x in the denominator. Here are the next two questions. I suggest you stop the video, try them, and then start the video again to see how you did. Now like I said earlier, I like to first simplify inside the brackets before I apply the exponent on the outside. So since it's a fairly straightforward fraction with only multiplying, I'm going to say q to the power of 4 and the p to the power of 3 will be in the denominator and r to the power of 2 is in the numerator. 
and everything's to the power of negative 1. Now remember, if you've got a fraction to the power of negative 1, it's like saying 1 divided by that fraction, and what that means is eventually the fraction will land up flipping over. So that will give me p to the power of 3 out of q to the power of 4 times r squared. Number 4. Again, let's try and simplify each part and then we can divide. So let's do the brackets first. a cubed c out of b squared. All of that will be squared. Divided by b cubed a to the power of 2c all to the power of negative 2. I can now square the first bracket. So that will give me a to the power of 6 because I multiply my exponents. c to the power of 2 out of b to the power of 4. Divided by, now since I've got a negative exponent, my fraction is going to become inverted. So I will have a squared c out of b to the power of 3, and that is going to be to the power of 2. Let's continue. Divided by a to the power of 4 c squared out of b to the power of 6. And so, since I'm dividing, I'm going to multiply by my reciprocal times by b to the power of 6, a to the power of 4, c squared. And now I can finally simplify and get my answer. So for the a's, a to the power of 6 divided by a to the power of 4, 6 minus 4 is 2, so I get a squared at the numerator. Then I've got b to the power of 4 and b to the power of 6. 4 is in the denominator, 6 is in the numerator. So there's more b's in the numerator, I'm going to get b squared, and I've got c squared in the numerator, and c squared in the denominator. So if I've got c squared divided by c squared, that would give me 1, and so I don't need to mention c's at all. That's my final answer. Now in the way I did this question, I took a lot of steps to work, but you may want to work in a way that where you combine two steps together. But just be careful that you don't rush and make careless mistakes. Here are the last two questions. Stop the video quickly, try them, and then start the video again. So in the next question, I'm going to multiply x squared by both values in the bracket. Now I know that x squared times x to the power of negative 2 will be x to the power of 2 plus negative 2. And then when I multiply the next part, it will be minus 3x squared. Now x to the power of 2 plus negative 2 gives me x to the power of 0 minus 3x squared. And we know that anything to the power of 0 is 1 minus 3 to the power of 3 times x squared. In the second question, you're going to have to multiply everything in the first bracket by everything in the second bracket. So I've got same base, and I'm going to add my exponents. And then my second value I'm multiplying is negative 1 times b to the power of negative 1. My inside term plus 1 b to the power of negative 1. And 1 times negative 1 is negative 1. So what I get is b to the power of negative 1 is one minus 1 is negative 2. These two are identical except they have opposite signs, so they're going to add together to give me 0. And I'm going to minus 1 at the end. So they want me to give the answer with positive indices. So that will be 1 out of b squared minus 1. Now some of you, if you know your factorizing well, you might have spotted the difference of two squares. Let me write my brackets in a different format. And you might also spot the difference of two squares. I've got the same first value in the brackets and the same last value in the brackets except opposite signs. So that will give me 1 out of b squared minus 1. That brings me to the end of this video. I'd like to remind you of two things. Firstly, be careful when you're applying the laws of exponents if you've got adding or subtracting. And secondly, I suggest simplifying inside brackets first before you use that bracket to do something else.